Holy crap. Here we go. Super important. We're good. We're good. We're fit. We're getting a hurricane that is coming through the Gulf of Mexico right now. By the end of day tomorrow, it'll be Oh, we need Brian. Take the swing arm out. Doesn't fit. Hits the rotor. Because this does this. Do you think if it was all centered? No. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Wreck Bike Rebuild Garage, the show that we take wreck bikes, turn them into dream bikes, and we give them away. Thanks to our beautiful people over on Patreon. If you want to support, go over there. In today's video, we're back on the 300, baby. Ow! Ow, ow! If you guys have been keeping up with all the wreck bike rebuild stuff, you guys know we've just spent the last, like, six weeks putting out one-hour-long episodes, and this is what it's done to Brian. <laughs> We tired, fam. So, uh, in today's video, we're done with the engine. We've got our giant parts ordered. Thank you, RevZella. Link to OEM parts down below. In today's video, we're kind of throwing it back. We're hoping today ain't gonna be a long day. If you guys remember, the last time we were talking about the CBR 300 that we are turning into a flat tracker, the last episode we got that thing made, which is a custom seat bracket. If you guys can see over there, past the light and past Luke, that is the CBR 300 frame. And you're probably wondering yourself, if, if it's been so long since you filmed with the CBR 300, why is the frame not powder coated? You are very uh, observant. That is a good question. We are kind of at a tough spot, and uh, we can kind of update you guys why. If you guys know anything about flat trackers, they have spoked wheels. If you don't know what a spoked wheel is, that is a spoked wheel. This is the type of wheel that a CBR 300 comes with. We have searched the internet and there was one company in the UK that actually makes custom, <laughs> custom spoked wheels. So naturally we reached out. I don't even think we said anything about the show. We were just like, we would like to take advantage of your services. They promptly emailed back and said they cannot help us to get spoked wheels for our CBR 300. And we are the kind of people that when we decide that we want something to look a certain way, we don't take no for an answer. No, it's hell or high water, and, and we're taking the high water route. We went back to the drawing board, went back to the internet, and uh, we believe, we have a sneaking suspicion that the wheels on my WR250, that's a 2008 Yamaha WR250, we believe that those wheels may fit. I'm not I'm not concerned whether they'll, they'll fit in between or not, it's just whether we'll be able to get them to work with everything that we have. We have this uh, really, really cool guy that we work with. He is, I don't know if he's actually a mechanical engineer or not, but he knows enough to be a mechanical engineer, that's Brian's for sure. Brian's talking about Judd, you guys, you guys have seen Judd. I had spoken to Judd about our situation here he mentioned that he would be uh, happy to help us out with getting all this stuff to work together so when you say work together brian um i mean we're going to have to or judd is going to have to find the proper bearing combination spacer combination to get everything to go together and work properly the axle that's inside of our 300 wheel that threads into our forks for our 300 is not the same size as the axle that is in your wr wheel so to make that happen, you have to replace the bearings inside to have the proper inside and outside diameter to one, fit in the wheel, and two, fit around the axle. Like I said, Judd is, uh, is very willing to help us out in this situation. You know, this wheel should have no problem fitting in between our forks for our 300. We do have our uh, upper and lower triple clamps and forks sitting on the floor over there. We're about to assemble them, um, loosely assemble them back together, the front end, so we can verify that the front wheel from the WR will fit in between our forks. If the wheel fits between the forks, then hopefully a judge should have no major issues making our wheel fit. So uh, that's what we are going to do today. We're gonna test fit that, and if all of this goes well, 
we know that there's a company called Warp 9, not a sponsor or anything like that, but they make custom wheels, you can select the colors and everything, for the 2008 WR250. Once we find out if this can work, we will then go to our Patreon guys, that's who helps us make decisions on what these bikes end up looking like, and we can start voting on colors and stuff like that. So if you guys want to actually influence the way these bikes are gonna look, Patreon's the way to do that. There will be a link down below. Um, but once we get the wheels ordered from Warp 9, then and only then can we go and get our frame powder coated. This is our huge road vlog for our 300. Today's video is going to be less of the mechanic-y stuff you guys have been seeing with all the engine. It's going to be more of a, you know, we're making custom motorcycles. We don't make just bolt-on parts that you guys can buy. Like, we actually like making big project bikes. Uh, this is part of it, and we want to take you guys through that entire process. So, Brian, what's our, where are we starting today? We're just going to build the front with the triple? Uh, yeah, we're going to uh, assemble the upper and lower triple clamps with the forks. Okay. And then we are going to uh, lay the forks down on our lift. We're going to remove the front wheel off the WR and verify that that wheel fits between our forks. I'm also looking right now for the, there it is, front brake rotor for our uh, CBR 300. That's another thing that is going to make a difference mm -hmm. uh, is if the rotor is the proper diameter. Okay. And if it's not, then Judd may have to make a spacer for the caliper to fit over the rotor that comes on the WR. All right, so we're gonna build the front real quick uh, and we'll check back in and go from there. Yay! Yay! Oh, this OEM triple that we ordered from Revzilla at the link down below, it does look great, Bo. Thanks for noticing. Because Revzilla is where we get all of our OEM parts. Is that an OEM for this one? For the CB300F. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so, in ordering all of our OEM parts, the flat tracker we're doing handlebars, not the clip-on style. Do we still have the clip-on E things? Somewhere. Those Luke's moving quick. Some. Oh my God. <laughs> Not by the camera. <laughs> Why? <laughs> All right. These are the guys that used to be on the CBR 300. They're like clip-on style things. But flat tracker motorcycles use a handlebar similar to what you see here. And when you have a handlebar, you need clamps. So we had to go with the CB300F or whatever F because it has handlebars. But it's the same model, essentially, right? It just made it very easy for us to switch over to handlebars by using this part. But that's a really cool situation where if somebody had a CBR 300 and they wanted handlebars, they could buy an OEM that. It's an OEM this, and then the clamps that go on top, and then a set of handlebars, and then all the cables and hoses. You guys will have to forgive us. We have three motorcycles we're building and giving away this season, so we do a lot real quick. Holy crap. Here we go. 
Super important. We're good. We're good. Yeah, that will fit. Okay, so it'll fit width-wise. Yep. Can you, uh, behind you, grab me the rotor, please? Beauty. Do we put it on with the rotor on? No, nope. I just wanted to make sure that the diameters were the same. They are, though? Which they are, which is good for Ooh, us. Oh, we're looking good, boys. We might actually get good news good in a Red Pack Reboot episode for once. We may need to space out the, the rotor to make it fit, or it, hopefully it fits right where it's at. How would you space it out? Like, what do you mean? Like, put a spacer in between the in rotor? In between the, the rotor and where they bolt to the wheel. Like the hub Just thing. to, yeah, just to move the rotor out, because we need it to fit where the caliper goes. So we got our wheel off. We have our front end assembly together. We are going to need the front brake caliper for the 300 and the two bolts that hold it to the fork. And then this stuff is ready to go to Judd. So Judd will just need this wheel. The wheel, the rotor, uh, the front axle. Mm -hmm. Which is that little boy down there. And the uh, fork set up there that you have okay. in your hand. So he, he will need that for the front. And now we need to set up everything for the rear. So explain to me what Judd's going to do to make all this work. Judd is going to make us spacers. Okay. Okay, he's going to make us spacers to go in between here right. and here. So there's always a spacer. These are the ones for the WR. Right. There's one for the left side. They just stick into the one side. for the right side. They actually hang. Um, they hang inside that rubber seal. Okay. So they kind of just hang out where they're at. The rubber seal keeps dirt from going in. The spacer keeps the spacing right, and the greased axle going through will keep all the water and debris from getting through all that stuff. Right. So he's going to make us new ones of these. Uh -huh. Okay. So. Right. See how loose that is? Yeah. So that's not going to do us any good. Right. So uh, another thing that Judd's going to have to help us figure out, um, he actually showed me the book that he has that has pretty much all the bearings that are available. Really? Uh, like it's a manufacturing book. It's about this thick uh -huh. and has every different style and size of bearing that he can get. Right. So this bearing that is inside here, mm -hmm. he'll need to find a bearing that is the same outside diameter as this. Okay. where the bearing slides inside of this spot. Right. And then the same inside diameter as the outside diameter of this axle. And he's just going to have to put that inside of the so hub for the... The seal will come out, the bearing will come out, the spacer in the middle of the wheel will come out. Mm -hmm. And then the bearing and seal on this side of the wheel will come out. Right. And then the new bearing and spacer that goes through the center of the wheel to match our axle oh. and our wheel will go in. Oh, so that middle area is removable and can be put a, a shorter, a smaller hole can be put into there. So there is, well, the, the bearings themselves mm -hmm. buy new bearings. Okay. Right, new bearings with the right sizes. Right. The right size to fit over this and the right size to fit inside of this. And Judd can do all that? He can just order well, it and it'll it, work? Well, if we can, that's why we're dropping it off to him. Oh, uh, so if he I can could tell you yes. It. Yeah. I would tell you yes, but I that's see. why I keep saying we're taking it to Judd for him to figure this out. He is right. going to hopefully be able to figure out which bearing combination we need, mm -hmm. and then he will make us the proper spacers to center the wheel in between right. the forks, and then hopefully the rotor fits on exactly where it is. If not, he may have to do some stuff to make the rotor and brake caliper fit all nicey nice as well. So you might have to jettify it. Now what I'm talking about, what he may have to do with that is either he may have to remove yeah. remove the rotor and then put a spacer behind the rotor, each one of these spaces where the bolt goes through the rotor to bring the rotor out. Right. Um, so are we gonna be using a WR and the only reason rotor or a, a CBR We're gonna be using rotor. a WR rotor. Okay. Because I've, the bolt pattern fits on the wheel. This is the confusing part where the two bikes are going to have to like mesh into each other. Right. So, so that's everything that is bolted to the wheel itself will be WR. Got it. Okay. And then everything that bolts the wheel to the bike mm -hmm. will be either modified or factory. So when it comes to the CB. brake for the front and the rear, those are going to have to be CBR 300, right? Yes. Okay. So is there, do, are all rotors like the same thickness? Thickness is not an issue. Oh, because the brakes are clamping in. Yeah. Okay. There, I mean, there are different thicknesses, but that's not our issue here. If you want to look at these, they're pretty close to the same thickness. Right. And does you it know, matter of the pattern on that rotor versus the pattern so on the, this rotor? So the 
design of the actual rotor surface means absolutely nothing as far as okay. fitment. And that's really all it is. Like your rotor on the WR has this uh, this wave style in it. Right. What that does is where it's cut down when it comes through the brake pads as it's as you're on the brakes and the rotor comes through, that's like a leading edge. So it bites harder. Oh, okay. As it runs through and then the holes in everything help dissipate heat. Okay. Now this one, it has it's cross drilled to help dissipate heat, but there's right. no wave to it to help it bite into the brake That's pads another better. thing that's a little confusing with the whole situation is like, it, does this tape us, uh, take a certain type of brake, brake pad or whatever than that, so. Um, We're not into the world of carbon ceramics, so no. <laughs> We're just gonna leave that conversation. So um, I was saying that he may have to um, move the rotor out or space the rotor out. And the reason why I mentioned that is because if you could see here, the uh, carrier for the rotor is kind of bumped in, which right. pushes the rotor out a little bit. And this one's flat. This one is just totally flat. But I do think that the hub for this is wider than the hub for that. Okay. So hopefully um, this rotor is where it needs to be width-wise. Right. So he'll have to center the wheel first with the spacers, the right bearings and all that stuff. And then from there he can move forward to making the, the brake line up. We also need the brake caliper. Of the CBR 300. And we also need the brake caliper bolts. Okay, so let's find those so we have everything to send to Mr. Jude. We know we're being very particular about these spoked wheel situations, and I'm, there's some of you guys out there that might not really care, but, you know, I don't think you get to dream bike status by just accepting accepting your limits, so it wouldn't really be a wreck bike rebuild. It'd be part on things that we already know work, and what, what fun is that? Probably less anxiety. Yeah, so the wheel that we are going to put on this bike is the reason why we're testing to see if this wheel will work right. is so we know that we can deal with this hub. So it's only the hub. The hub is the most important part. You can't change any of that. Right. The hub is the hub and it is what it is. You can't really modify much on your hub. Okay. Um, so being that the hub fits in between the forks Hopefully we can get the right size bearings, which it looks like there's not a whole lot of space difference between the bearings that are in this wheel now and the axle that's in there. So hopefully somebody makes a bearing that'll work for us. Mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. Um, it looks like the brake rotor is just gonna line right up once yeah, the proper spacers are in here. Cause it, right now the wheel just looks pretty centered between the fork legs. So, um, if that works right there, if we could just center the wheel and the brake rotor hits on properly, mm -hmm. we're in good shape. Um, While we have this here, um, Judd is also gonna be doing some cleanup on the forks for us. Yes. So do you wanna explain what we're gonna have him do while he has the uh, forks? So we're place? not planning on running any sort of front fender at all on our bike. It's Correct. going to be just a wheel hanging out there on the forks out in the open for everybody to see. Yes. So these uh, one, two, three little nipples that are on the fork are on this side as well. One, two, three. So guys, Those nipples out. hold the fender in place. This guy as so, well too, right? Yep, the so that's one. what the fender bolts onto. Being that we're not going to be running a fender, we're going to remove that stuff. Okay. Um, and it'll be nice and clean and pretty and you'll never know that it wasn't like that from the beginning. So if we get these cut off, there's gonna be raw metal here. Yep. So are we gonna get these painted or powder coated? Yep. And are we going to have to disassemble the fork in order to do that? If we powder coat them, yes. Oh right, paint, you don't have to do paint all that. Paint you don't have to, they could kinda just tape everything off and paint How it. much of a pain in the ass is it to just remove this thing to get it powder coated? Since powder coating is what we're already gonna be doing. Uh, dust seal, circlip, fork seal, oil, spring, rod inside, you have to disassemble it completely. Okay, so we would have to do a full disassembly of the fork just to get that powder coated. Yeah, but... because uh, they have to put the thing in the oven and you can't uh, put any of this rubber stuff inside the powder coat oven. So pretty much everything that we have right here right now needs to go to Judd. Everything on there needs to go to Judd? Not the spacers, but everything that we have bolted together right now. So what I would like for you to do is I would like you to come on this side, take these spacers that are here and uh, put them back on the WR, get that 
kind of set so there's not stuff just laying around. So, no, they go on the axle. So I'm confused. All right, that's normal. We need to get that thing in the groove. It needs to go towards you. I'm trying. All right, so the rotor is too big. Take the swing arm out. Give me the brake stay. Doesn't fit. Hits the rotor. It clears the low points, but not the high points. For some reason, it doesn't seem like it's hitting down here. Though. It's because this does this. Do you think if it was all centered, though? No. Right, because right now it's hitting the high point and the axle is pulled as far this way right. as possible. When it's here, then the axle is centered. Mm -hmm. So it's going to hit. So can you machine down a rotor? Yeah, of course. You can cut anything you want. So would that be a solution to that problem? Hopefully. <laughs> why, why hopefully and not yes? I'm not a machinist. If I was a machinist, then I'd be able to do this myself and we wouldn't take it to Judd. But I am not a machinist. And I will leave that answer up to the professionals. It's minimal, so we can make it work. That's it's the same thing as like hopefully the back of the caliber. It's like the change is very minimal. All right. Well, the good thing is, is we can get it all together. Everything goes on stacked together. So from here, I'm pretty sure that Judd can make this work as well. I mean, are we are we good to just send this to Judd then? Tires. Yeah, I hope so. I don't like hope so. Um, so the person that owns this motorcycle, whenever you know we finish it and give it away. Uh, they're gonna have to buy parts for when it comes to wheels. If they're gonna like upgrade something, that's gonna be a little funky situation. Well, hopefully, we give it back to them. There's nothing to upgrade. Well, I so best case scenario, long way down the road, they need chain a and new, sprockets. That's what I'm saying. Like a new chain and sprockets, they're gonna have to be like, all so right. So the front sure sprocket that. is for a CBR 300R, mm -hmm. and the rear sprocket is for a WR 250. Like a Frankenstein motorcycle, which will make it difficult for them. But hey, hey you got we custom got... bikes, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they have a motorcycle that literally nobody else can, could or does have. Okay, so we're headed to Judd's now then. We're gonna take Yay! all this shit. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everything looks good. Swing arm fits over my WR rear and rotor seams, what is it, five eight or three eighths? Too yeah, wide. Not too wide, too much diameter. It's too big in diameter. This way. Is rubbing on our brake caliper stay. Either we'll have to have Judd modify the rotor or modify the stay or modify both. That'll be up to him, which will be the best way to do it. As I showed you guys, the front looks good. The rear looks potentially good. So at this point, we're on a send to Judd status. And obviously, Judd's gonna be doing stuff at his garage, so we won't be filming there. But uh, I guess the next episode, we should have everything done and we'll show people 
what happened? Ideally, we could have Judd come over, do an explanation like of Like he did last time. Yeah, that's Come what I mean. over, bring his parts, and then we'll assemble everything here right. from here. Anytime we ask Judd to do something, like, we expect here, and, like, Judd's way up there somewhere. It's, he's incredible. Shout out to you, Judd, if you're watching this video. So, if you guys are interested, uh, you know, it, it does get confusing around here with having the CBR 300, 600, and a 1000. So... If you guys are interested in only the 300 videos, we do have a playlist in the, com or in the description down below, and it's only the 300 build. We have one for the 600, and we have one for the 1000, and we're, that's the best way we can make this as organized as possible. So that's all we got for this episode. If you guys got to the end of it, make sure to hit the like button. We always really appreciate that. And if you guys want a chance to win one of the motorcycles, one of the three bikes that we're giving away this season, make sure to check out Patreon, uh, Wreck Bike Rebuild Garage Patreon page. Uh, links for that also in the description. Outro crew. Um, shit. No! <laughs> ah! outro, outro crew, how many life points did I just lose? Um, Regeneration. Okay. All right. I, I got to go before I get shot at some more. And uh, outro crew, let us know down in the comments. Anybody? Anything? <coughs> Nothing? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller. 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 Who's participating in uh, the event happening this November? Wait, this video will come out. Who participated in the event? Just so you guys understand, it is currently October 28th as of recording this video. Um, and if you're wondering why the hell did you guys record this so long ago and just now put it out, Patreon's like three weeks ahead, fam. So you get early content and you get chances to win motorcycles and you get to help us decide what they look like and do. What a deal! All right, I'm it's safe. It's practically giving them away! It's practically giving away! There's actually technically a free way to win. What? Don't cut that. Anybody don't cut it. Are you done, done? Done, done, done! done.